Today we're looking at cryptosporidiosis, more commonly known as sticktail. Now this is caused by a single-celled parasite called cryptosporidium, which is a mutant form of coccidia. There are 11 strains of cryptosporidium. The two strains that specifically attack reptiles are Serpentis, found primarily in snakes, and Varani, found primarily in lizards. It is also important to note that these aren't zoonotic, so they cannot be contracted by humans or any other mammals. However, if we intervene, we can prevent the spread of this parasite. So how does this parasite get around? Well, the infection can be spread by contact via oral or fecal contamination. If a reptile is infected, they can pass the infected form called an oocyst through their feces or orally via water or food bowls. If an uninfected gecko ingests the oocyst or comes into contact with some infected feces, it can contract the parasite. As well as this, if a feeder insect has been in contact with infected water or feces and then it's eaten by the gecko, the gecko will also be infected by the parasite. At this point, I'd like to note that this is why you shouldn't take uneaten feeder insects from one gecko and give it to another. If a gecko is already infected and keeps drinking contaminated water, eating contaminated food, or is still in contact with contaminated feces, all it will do is continue to increase the number of parasites in its system. So what are the symptoms? Now unfortunately there are no distinctive symptoms that prove that your gecko has the particular parasite since the symptoms can be attributed to many other parasites and other underlying illnesses. Though things to look out for include loss of appetite, regurgitation of food, change in consistency of feces, so diarrhea or strange coloured stools, weight loss, wasting away in a thin tail, enlarged darkened liver, general weakness and obviously death. So what is a parasite doing to your lizard system? In the lizard, the parasite invades the GI tract in the lining of the intestine, creating inflammation and lesions that severely inhibit the absorption of nutrients. As you can imagine, a gecko can go downhill quickly. So you think your gecko might be infected, but how can you be sure? First of all, take your gecko to a vet. Sitting at home worrying about what it could be won't benefit your gecko at all. I know a lot of people say they can't afford the vets, but to me, if you're taking on a pet, you're taking on the responsibility of paying for a vet when it's needed. And unfortunately, if this isn't treated, your gecko will just die. Now at the vets, they can do a number of tests such as examining feces, examining regurgitated stomach content, and examining the byproducts from your gecko's vent and they can also do an endoscopic biopsy. So if your gecko is crypto positive, how can it be treated? Unfortunately at this point there are no cures for this infection. However there are certain medicines which can reduce the number of parasites in your gecko's body but your gecko will still be at high risk of contaminating other reptiles. The medicines seem to be a lot more effective on snakes rather than lizards as well. Now, since there's no cure and parasites can reproduce at an alarming rate, in some cases it's a lot more humane to have your gecko put down. So how can we prevent our geckos from being infected? Now, first of all, this goes without saying, never put a new gecko in a tank with one of your original geckos. A new gecko should always be kept in quarantine. Any gecko you suspect of having a parasite should also be put in quarantine. The cryptosporidium is remarkably resistant to many common disinfectants. That's why it's important to use strong animal safe disinfectants for your gecko's tank, hides, food and water bowls. Also, if you buy secondhand goods for your reptiles, make sure they're completely disinfected too. Buy your geckos from reliable sources. Please avoid big chain pet stores. I've had so many emails from people who have geckos that look like they have stick tail and they've got their geckos from Petco and PetSmart and I know some people will defend them and I know there are decent shops out there but I've seen so many cases where lizards have been kept in tiny tanks, they're overcrowded, there's poo everywhere, it's totally unhealthy for them and it's so easy to see how this parasite can spread so quickly. Also, do not breed a gecko who is crypto-positive, since the offspring will also be crypto-positive, and so the parasite spreads even more. And finally, educate yourself and others about this parasite in a range of different illnesses with leopard geckos and other lizards, so you know what to look out for and you know how to avoid it. 
I hope this video has helped. Remember there are many reasons why a leopard gecko will stop eating so please check out my video that I did on that one. However, if your gecko is ill, it is vital you take them to a vet. I cannot work miracles, I cannot help you through my computer if your gecko is genuinely ill, so please, please go and see a vet. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, I hope this has helped, and goodbye.